First man in. I'm not sure what's on the docket, but I'm trying to get things set up to get knocked out. I know these need to be trimmed because the re-rings are in, so I set that jig up. Bill's still cranking away on the crescent. This drum was getting a microphone jack, and there must have been some delamination or blowout, so that's why it's in clamps. There's two more that get mic jacks. I can strip those so they're ready. These podium parts probably need a scuff back and another coat of poly. I'm not sure if we're throwing dust today, so might want to hold off. I would really like to get anything on this board that came in in 2021 gone. 28 inch kick drum that got destroyed during shipment is part of that. We could probably get started on that. The stock's here. Could definitely get one of those re-rings in today. We'll see. I mean, it's custom shop, but I'd like to be within, you know, a three, three month turnaround, six month on large projects. Not sure what's realistic. Okay, scratch that. Bill already did these. Well, that's good. Buttoning this baby up. This is, what is it, Ludwig Breakbeat by Questlove? Yeah. And it's a 16 inch kick, Yeah. a 10 inch tom and a 13 inch tom. Yeah, they're pretty cool. And yeah. Penny bought two of them so she could have a double bass hilarious and awesome it's poplar so not the greatest construction yeah. I don't know what I price mean, point they come in at. Wood, actually yeah it's I think it's base wood it's real soft it looks like that plywood that Lowe's calls blonde wood which is poplar yeah I, maybe it's poplar it just feels like crazy soft it feels like the base wood I used to use for badges until I decided it wasn't durable enough She'll be taking it off to put the microphone in there. Yeah, that's true. Got the second coat of poly on these podium parts. A couple shells sanded back. Bill was doing a photo shoot with his crescent outside. We do have some shells to cut and some work to do, but I think first we're going to try to film an assembly video for this. Do a video to show how to put this thing together. I mean, the flat stock parts. I don't love nearly as much, but the way it's assembled, like the quality of construction is like a thousand times better. Yeah, and we came up with it in a car. Yep. Should have filmed it old timey. So you got your Turkish Crescent kit. Now what? Well, Billy, I'll tell you. <laughs> About damn time. Now the drum, 28 inch diameter. Getting to that point where I can't tell if the camera's out of focus or just my eyeballs are out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> Look 
Cutting long, going hot. That is to say, I hope I cut it long. This is where he marks it, goes back, takes off a CH, and then he puts it back in the drum, and he's missing like three inches. Yeah, and it's way too short. <laughs> Not a little too short. Let's try this. It moved on me. I hope you wanted your finish embedded with man glitter. It's like the tiniest bit long, but I have a feeling when it's clamped up, that's gonna close. Revisiting this baby, we were waiting for a color match. And then we're kind of like, ah, let's just roll with it. And then Bill decided it was too, a little splotchy. So we did another sand back and die pass. It's hard to tell. I mean, that has a pretty prominent glue seam. Yeah. So the rate of absorption, like some things you just can't force. That drum has some wild grain in spots. Yeah, there's like almost really like cool a flamage. Here. If I do one pass where I like wipe off the excess after every like quarters of the shell or something like that, then like there's enough moisture on the shell that like keeping the whole thing wet the second pass is a lot more doable. Usually <laughs> that, that winds up with even color. Not always, but usually. You can see the prominent glue line oh, yeah. here. And then there's another vertical band right there, which is weird. There's another spot that's really just pops out, like right there. Yeah, that figuring is really cool. That's a wrap. Two things off the board. A lot of things pushed ahead. This thing started. Now in between chipping away at these, we are gonna start putting some infrastructure stuff back into play. Mainly this wall and this wall. So we're thinking about moving that tool cabinet to the left side of the mill, then a drill press, then the south bend, get rid of the small compressor, shopsmith goes to this wall and this other crazy drill press we're gonna modify that will be dedicated for drilling shells and this old guy will be dedicated to drilling the hoops the welding stuff the sir chomps a lot don't need to be here not sure about the bandsaw part of me thinks maybe reduce the size of that table but i don't know we don't use the jointer and planers a lot, but we don't have anywhere else to put them. And they're too tall to nest on the backside of the table saw without collisions. I don't know. I, think, I guess we'll get this wall sorted first and then yeah. we'll deal with the second wall. And then maybe someday <laughs> we'll revisit this mess. Nope. <laughs> Not today. Nope.